I was recently reading an article online that was discussing some of the problems associated with managing power quality on electrical transmission circuits. These are the circuits that span distances of hundreds of miles and can be energized at hundreds of thousands of volts. In this article, they were talking about something known as the Ferenti effect, which was apparently named after the guy who discovered it. The Ferenti effect is a condition where the voltage at the end of a transmission line can exceed the voltage at the beginning of the transmission line by 15 to 20 percent in some cases. That would mean if you had a line that normally energized at 500,000 volts and it was under the influence of the Ferenti effect, the end of that line might see voltages of 550 to 600,000 volts. That would be bad. The station transformers and metering equipment and the insulators are not designed to handle those types of over voltages. But where is it coming from and what's causing it? Well, as it turns out, transmission lines have the strange curiosity of acting like giant capacitors when they're energized. This is a function of their length, the height, the average height that that line is above ground, and the frequency with which they are being energized, which in this country is 60 hertz. In other countries, it's 50 hertz. Southern Hemisphere is 50 hertz. But whether it's 50 hertz or 60 hertz, that condition can still be seen. Well, what does that mean? Well, in addition to acting like giant capacitors, all electrical circuits have a certain amount of self-inductance. This is the property of an electrical circuit or component to store electrical energy in a magnetic field. Capacitance, on the other hand, is the ability of those same components to store electrical energy in the form of an electric field. And when you have an electric field and a magnetic field operating in the same arena, you have electricity. Boom! Magnetic fields and capacitive charge can resonate with one another. A transmission line that has an inherent amount of what's called parasitic capacitance and parasitic inductance are storing electric fields and magnetic fields together. And that's where this voltage rise is coming from. Those components, those circuit components, are in series to one another. And this forms something called an LRC series circuit. In an LRC series circuit, where R, or resistance, is negligible, the impedance of that circuit, which is the measure of the resistance to the flow of electrical current in a circuit that contains an alternating voltage goes down. I'll say that again. The impedance in an LC circuit goes down. That the transmission line has a capacitive and an inductive component acting together in series causes the impedance to go down. And that's where the voltage rise is coming from. As I so often do, because this is kind of a complicated subject, when I have difficulty understanding it, the first thing I do is I build a model and I try to replicate it in the lab. Not that this is a lab, but it's as close to it as I can come. And if you use your imagination and you look at this, this is my end of the transmission line model. So this is the end of the transmission line. This is my voltage meter, and I'm hoping you can see the numbers on here. And behind me, behind the camera, there is a voltage source which is feeding these bus bars. That voltage source is being powered by the building power, which is 120 volts. It's hooked up through an extension cord, but before that extension cord makes its electrical connection to that power source, I have wired in a small amount of capacitance and inductance. And I've wired them so that they are in series to one another. Now, at the end of this line, remember, it's energized at the beginning at 120 volts. The end of this line, we see 140 volts. That is a direct result of the Ferenti effect. And that's cool, because there's no transformers between here and there. And so the only way that this voltage rise is manifesting itself, if you will, is as a result of the reactance, the, the resonating reactance of capacitance and inductance. So how do you get rid of it? Well, in the world of distribution line work, which is where my wheelhouse is and the world that I live in, 
we oftentimes put capacitor banks up to counteract the effects of inductive load. In a transmission circuit, which is what this is, again, if you use your imagination, it's exactly the opposite. Because we have a parasitic capacitive load on the line, we are going to add an inductor. And in the power industry, they call that a reactor. This device right here is my reactor. This light bulb here is my load, which we'll get into in a minute. And this is my meter. So again, we have 120 roughly volts feeding this circuit, but at the end, under the influence of the Ferenti effect, we have 140.4 volts, which is a rise of about 20 volts. If I energize this light bulb, that's the equivalent to putting a small amount of load on the line, which I will do right now, simply by screwing that in. Looking at the voltage meter, we see that that voltage has come down by about a volt. So simply, I guess the point of this is, by adding a small amount of load, we can't get, a rid, of, can't get rid of that effect. I'm going to unscrew that light bulb. This time I'm going to electrically connect my reactor. And what my reactor is going to do is going to cancel the effects of the capacitance, which is resonating with the inductance back at the beginning of the circuit. Now all of this in a real life situation will be taking place along the length of the line and increasing as the line length progresses. Here again I'm going to energize my inductor and we're going to watch my voltage meter and see what it does. And lo and behold, look at that. It came down to 119, 120 volts. And that just coincidentally enough is about exactly the same voltage as we are putting into this circuit. So we have, simply by adding a small amount of inductance at the end of the circuit, mitigated the effects of the capacitive rise, which is present due to the parasitic capacitance added at the beginning of the circuit, and thereby counter counteracted it, got rid of it, wiped it away, snuffed it out. I can now turn my light bulb on and it is operating at its designed nominal voltage, which is 120 volts. Carrying this over into the world of transmission, all these voltages would be increased by a factor of about a 10 million or something because, you know, we're dealing with 500,000 volts, not 120, so you have to scale this up. But the effects are the same. And the fact that we can replicate it in here under controlled conditions with perfect results is really cool. A good way to understand it. That's all.